It's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights. It's gonna be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're gonna fight, 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 fight for women's rights. Hello and welcome to the Fight for Women's Rights Battle Against Patriarchy. I am T. Erica, your host, and I'll be fighting against Master Patriarchy on January 22nd. So I do hope you'll join us. Right now, we're doing an awesome video series where I'm introducing women's rights advocates and smart women from all around the country who are doing great things and sharing um, their their, their power and their progress and their initiatives that are pushing women forward. Today, we're speaking with Dara, and I want to, her to explain to you why exactly she was invited to the show today. Hey, Dara. Hey, happy to be here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love this concept of fight the patriarchy because this is what I'm all about. It's like my blood is getting excited just thinking about this. Um, so the quick backstory is I was always someone who was really timid, had a lot of fear. And then around age 10, my mom threw me in a karate class thinking, oh, that'll get her out of her shell. And I had no idea what I was getting into. But she lured me in by saying, you can beat up your brother. I have a brother who's four years older. And I was like, sign me up. <laughs> so, um, But there's not a lot of talking in a karate class. And she didn't realize that. So it didn't necessarily help me find my voice. But it did teach me body confidence. And I liked that. So I kept doing it. I got pretty good at it. In fact, I got my black belt. And uh, I know not too many people know that because I kind of keep it on the down low. But I did teach martial arts for a long time, like 15 years, in fact. And I started out of my garage. This was like on a whim, you know, let me let me do something different. I wasn't a good fit for corporate. Can you tell? And so that didn't work out so well. And I, uh, I was too rebellious in a way, but I was still very quiet. So I taught martial arts for a long time. And then I realized, you know, I really want to do something for women. I always was passionate about women. I was always a feminist. I knew that. I didn't really know how to transition it. And I just literally started out of the garage, same thing, uh, with a women's circle, started helping other women. Well, how do you find it frustrating if you get talked over at work? Or how are you getting maybe not heard at home. And so we would just have these circles and the circles expanded. And I've been on this mission, you know, I started in the Bay Area, and now it's going globally. And you can see some of my books behind me, I honestly, I went full in because I was always doing a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, keeping it, keeping it kind of small, I didn't have the confidence in the beginning. But when I started to see the reaction of other women saying, hey, me too, I need to speak up. I need to handle bullies. I need to know how to do this. Uh, in 2019, during the whole Me Too movement, I wrote the book, Someone You Know, to help women who are tired of getting talked over, tired of dealing with bullies, tired of the sexual assault, because a lot of people didn't understand. And since I was in the self-defense world, I wanted to give this perspective of instead of thinking that we're going to be attacked by this guy with the, the hood on behind a bush who jumps out. I wanted them to understand it's someone, you know, it could be a neighbor, a friend, family member, coworker. Those are the people I want you to pay attention to and how to shut it down when they start to discriminate you. So I've been on this uh, major confidence rampage, helping empower women find their voice. And I don't do so much of the physical stuff anymore, but now it's more confidence in the workplace and confidence in the home to, uh, to really show their strength. And I'm loving it. Wow. So you had to find your voice first. Can you tell us about the trigger for that? Because, yes, yeah, it's, it's a big difference between physical strength and actually speaking up for yourself in yeah. that moment of passion and fear. Yeah, I don't know if it was one specific moment. I just know when I look back on my life, there's so many situations. I got bullied in the workplace. I remember I would be bullied in relationships. I just didn't have the uh, strength to find my voice. And even in the family, my gosh, my family would bully me. I have a large Italian family. I hope they're not watching this, but they would bully me because I wasn't loud like them. And I realized there's nothing wrong with me. It was just everybody else projecting onto me their, their crap and all their issues. And once I started to believe in that, I have something to say. So when I would lead the women's circles, for example, and other women were saying, you know, me too, I feel timid. How do I, how do I speak up? I was like, well, what, let's talk about this. And in my element, I could speak. 
But if you put me in a different environment where people were very assertive and aggressive and bullying, I would go back into my shell. So in the beginning, I just started talking on topics that I felt really passionate about and women's empowerment was one of them. So I started with that and just kept speaking and speaking up. And then eventually I was like, what the hell am I so afraid of? If I could speak on that, I could speak on anything. I just kept going. <laughs> so eventually the stages would get bigger. And I was realizing the fear was up here. It was nothing in me that needed to believe that. It was just outside. It was other people telling me that I couldn't do it. And once I stopped believing it, there was no holding back. <laughs> I was like, let this girl go. What holds back women from speaking up? What do you think the internal dialogue is that makes you to be quiet, you know, in times where you need to shout? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I think a lot of it stems from fear of judgment, fear of being maybe when they were little, seven, eight, nine years old at the dinner table, maybe they had a dad who maybe sa said, you know, be quiet, you know, this isn't the place for you to speak up or Sometimes they go into the workplace and then they're told there that uh, you're too assertive or you talk too much. And so all of a sudden we start to judge ourselves of, oh, maybe this isn't appropriate. I should start to be quiet. For other people, it's a fear of retaliation. They worry if they do speak up in a meeting or in a workplace that maybe other women will not like them or they'll be judged by other people and that competition starts to come in. But we just develop these things over the years. We start to carry it with us the negativity that people dump on us. I, for me, I've had teachers. I remember teachers saying mean things. I mean, not everybody's perfect. The, the world's, you know, sometimes they say the wrong things and we yes. carry this. I mean, I remember a teacher telling me you're not a good writer. Well, four books later, who the hell was she? So we mm. don't need to carry this stuff with us, but we do. And what I want us to start remembering is listen to yourself, listen to the true voice that way down, you have to peel off the garbage, peel off the layers of what other people dumped on you. And when it comes to the core of it, you are worthy, your voice matters, your opinion matters, you have to start sharing it. And it doesn't mean you have to share it in an aggressive way to become a bully yourself, but you have a right to speak up. And I want every woman to really hear that. So in essence, you're saying we have a fear of being disliked or disapproved, which keeps us from speaking up for ourselves. Is that true? For some people, yeah. For some people, they're people pleasers. They worry about if other people are going to judge them if they say no or they go against the grain, right? It's different for other people. I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily a people pleaser, but I can connect to that because that's what a lot of my clients are. Um, I was just someone who's very shy and timid because everyone around me was so loud. I didn't know how to interject. It wasn't like I really was shy. They just kept telling me I was. And so eventually I just believed it. I just believed it because wow. if somebody tells you something enough, right, that's why it's so important. The words we use with our kids and whomever, because yes. it's, it's really sinks in. And it, I had to literally change the language because I would say to myself, Oh, you're, you're not, you're not, um, you're not a, a, a assertive person. So then I'd be in a meeting. I mean, up until recently, like year, two years ago is really when my breakthrough happened, I would be at a, a meeting at my kid's school. And I'd have a question, but I wasn't going to ask because deep down the, the record said, you're quiet, you're shy. And all I did, it's Tareka was change the language I used for myself and say, No, you're a speaker, your voice matters. And I would tell my friends, I'm a speaker before I even started speaking on stage, I started using that language. And so then next time I'm in that environment at the school meeting and I have a question and I'm thinking, oh, no, I'm quiet. I go, no, no, you are a speaker. And then my hand went up. It started to change the actions I took because I started to believe it. And that self-talk was all I needed to do was change the self-talk. Why? Tell women why right now it is vital that they speak up when they see an issue, when they have a fear, when they have a problem. Why is it vital for women to speak up immediately? Oh, I need you all to speak up because there's so many of us who don't. And if we don't, the abusers and the bullies and the a-holes out there will take advantage of us. And I don't want that to happen anymore. I mean, I've written books on bullying and sexual assault prevention. I could tell you this stuff is rampant and it's go not going to change. I can't change the way men behave. I can't. I wish I could. I'm doing the best I can on my own son. But I need the women to speak up to let people know that's not okay. Even if it's from another woman, I got bullied from a woman in my first job. And I wish I had the power and strength back then to say, this is not okay. 
And all you need to do is think of a very short phrase. It doesn't need to be a big thing. Don't get yourself overwhelmed with it. It's not okay to talk to me like that. And you keep the eye contact or that's inappropriate. The shorter the phrase, the better you have more power. And I need you to do this because there's another woman behind you who's too afraid to, or she's in a situation where she can't speak up. Maybe she has a, a partner who can hurt her if she does. So we need to, when we have that ability to tell people, hey, this stuff is not okay, whether it's a sexist joke or comment, whether it's harassment, bullying, whatever's going on. I, I Now what I do is I'm an advocate. And so once we find our voice, then we start speaking up for other people. So if you're in a scene and you see something that's not appropriate, you call people on it. And again, not in an aggressive way. We're not trying to start a fight. And I like the fight, so I'm <laughs> not trying to start a fight. We're, we're just, hey, that's not okay. I actually, I remember years ago, I was in like a supermarket or something. There's a guy being really uh, aggressive with his girlfriend and they were fighting. And I was trying to make eye contact with her and like, are you okay type of thing. And he was getting kind of hostile and I wasn't sure if he's going to push her or something. And I, I just loudly said, is everything okay over here? Cause I'm watching. I want to make sure she's okay. And so it's just a way of saying people are paying attention. If you're in a meeting, you can say, hey, that's not okay, the way you spoke up to Janet or whatever. Just try to get people's back and it lets that person know you're there for them. And then they called that bully out on their, their junk and they hopefully won't do it again because we need to speak up. All of us need to. We need to speak up. We need to start saying when things are not okay for ourselves and for others. Collectively, if we all get together and start doing this, then people's behavior will change because they won't feel that no one's ever going to stand up to them and say anything about it. So we need to say it's not okay. I like that phrase. Every woman under the sound of my voice, if you see something that's not okay, say that's not okay. If someone's speaking to you in a certain way and you feel that it's not okay, don't second guess yourself. If you feel it's not okay, then you say that's not okay. Is that something that we need to be doing, Dara? Absolutely. That's as simple as it gets and you don't have to second guess it you're right because your intuition knows we have very strong intuition as women and if you listen to that it's telling you for a reason something's not right here but the problem is most women don't listen so when you get that nagging feeling pay attention and say just simple as that you don't need to be argumentative this is not okay or uh this is not appropriate or i'm i'm not that that joke was offensive that's it no apology There's no uh, making yourself feel bad, like you did something wrong. That's it. And we're then leaving the scene, if you want to take it a step further, to let them know this isn't okay. Because if we stay, Mm. the other person will will kind of go back. Well, what was every time I'd say that joke to you, I thought it was funny. No, no, we're not staying for the, the next response. We take our power when we leave after we say it. And so it's very simple. And this is, you know, some of the work that I do to help women learn how to really command that presence and speak, whether it's in the workplace, the home or with a partner, because so for so long, we've been silenced and talk about the patriarchy. That's why I need us to speak up. I mean, it's, it's not going to change unless we all do it. Every race, every color, every age, it doesn't matter if you're 80 years old, it's not too late to start speaking up. It's time to let your voice be heard and respect yourself enough to to speak up. Amen. How can we connect with you, Dara, if we want to find you on social media? Which one of your um, offerings is most important for us to, to, to take a look at? Uh, well, I'm on uh, all the main sites. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Facebook. But if you go to daraconnolly.com, you can start there. I have a program. It's called PTC. That's my signature program, Positive Transformational Confidence for Women. And I do small group masterminds. They're they're affordable. They start at $2 a day. I do private coaching. And I'm just here for people that want a space, a safe space. I know where you're at. I know what you've been through. If you're finding that's challenging and you need, you know, somebody to hold your hand, I'm here to help guide you. But if you also need that swift kick in the butt, I could do that too. So (laughs) I just, I don't want us to ever feel like we can't do this or it's, um, you know, too weak to do it. You are stronger than you can imagine. Wow. Thank you so much, Dara, for joining me today and for enlightening everyone and getting me all hyped up to say it's not okay. I can't wait till the next time I get to say that I've already feel empowered just after hearing you speak. Thank you so much, Dara, for this work you're doing in this world for women. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you and I can't wait to uh, get to know you a little bit more next time. Thank you so much.
Awesome. Everybody out there, keep continue to watch this series and make sure you sign up for the fight for women's rights battle against patriarchy. We're bringing patriarchy down in hopes to create a better world for everyone. I'll talk to you guys soon. It's going to be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're going to fight, 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 fight for women's rights. It's going to be a fight, 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 fight tonight. We're going to